Well, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. I was just thinking as I was waking up, another reason why I like an oil cleanser or a cleansing balm, I know it's like such a random thought to have upon awakening. Most people are like, eh, I don't wanna get up. Me, I'm like, is there another reason to oil cleanse? Aha, I've always said this. I don't particularly like makeup removers. I find that they sting around the eyes. While they're generally mild, I feel as though if you were going through the uh, increased sensitivity stage of starting like a retinoid. Makeup removers can really sting for a lot of people with rosacea, depending of course on the formula. I just find that the oil or the cleansing balm, it's a lot more soft, silky and smooth and gentle. It's you know, probably all on my head. Anyway, speaking of which, I'm gonna wash my face. I'm wearing my denim jeans I bought. Denim jeans. Denim jean short. I'm wearing my denim shorts I bought. I'm wearing my denim shorts I bought. I'm wearing my denim shorts I bought back in 2021. They are still holding up. Who remembers when I got these? I also have them in white and I have a black pair too. They have really withstood multiple washings. But yeah, coming back to what I was saying, I really feel like um, for those of you with rosacea, I, you know, I know that the makeup removers can really burn and sting. I'm just gonna come on uh, with this sunscreen from Thank You Farmer. I've, I've been enjoying this. It's a little on the heavy side. Speaking of rosacea, you know, sun protection is so important because UV rays are a major trigger for flushing and redness but a lot of sunscreens themselves can burn and sting and trigger a flare. So with rosacea, it's like a battle to find a sunscreen that doesn't aggravate your skin so you can protect it. Of course, mineral sunscreens are often a lot easier to tolerate, um, but they're sometimes more difficult to spread on the skin surface. I would say in my experience, I find, sorry, I know I get muffled when I do my upper lip, um, in my experience, I find that the Japanese, the Korean, the European chemical sunscreens, it's, it's not as much of an issue with the burning and stinging. The, the, they have more filters, um, filter combinations they can use, and I find that the stinging is not an issue. Likewise, m most of the time, although not 100%, those sunscreens don't cause blurry, blurry vision, stinging around the eyes like the ones here. Do, which is the ones here when they do that that's super hazardous like this right here that I'm doing with this um, Korean sunscreen around my eyes um, if I did that with a lot of American sunscreens oh it would burn I found a, a handful of them don't and I don't know what the magic is but a handful of American chemical sunscreens don't like one of the Neutrogena ones the one that comes in like a peach bottle I'm able to tolerate that around my eyes just fine and a handful of ones from La Roche Posay. The Milton Sunscreen Milk, I've never had a problem with around my eyes, but man, sometimes I get those burny eyes. Buckle up guys, today we're going on a field trip to Dallas. And so we're gonna be there, I'm going there for um, an event that I'm looking forward to. Um, and I'm gonna stay the night. So we'll take you guys along. Hopefully the flight doesn't get messed up. And yes, I know it's wild to think that you would fly to a different city in the same state, but it's, it's much easier to do that because it's an hour flight versus like a four or five hour drive. No, thank you. I'd rather be at the airport getting work done on my computer uh, than have to battle Houston traffic. I've told you guys, like I don't enjoy driving here and the idea of like having to confront Houston drivers, it's just like, no, I don't have time for that. Speaking of rosacea, I feel for those of you <clears throat> who coffee is a trigger or hot liquids. You know, for some people it's just straight up coffee, for others it's simply warm liquids in general. And if it were the warm liquid thing for me, I would, I would have a hard time too because I, I don't really drink iced coffee for this, not because I don't like it, but I drink it too quickly. The heat kind of helps me pace myself. 
I just love coffee so much. And it's not the caffeine. I, I don't rely on caffeine. Like, I'm super energetic. And I am usually, you know, I'm up and doing stuff oh, at least one to two hours before I even have my coffee. And I feel like I'm ready to go, but my happiness level definitely escalates post coffee because it's just so good. And I can't rely on others to reproduce quite as an extent. Although some coffee shops really slay the coffee. So while I don't rely on coffee to like get myself going and everything, I simply really, really enjoy it. But man, tell me if you can relate to this. There's nothing worse than getting your morning coffee from someone else and it's so horrible. It actually leaves you fiending for the, does anyone else experience that? Like, you know, if you have to get coffee from, I don't know, a restaurant or something and it's just really bad coffee, por ejemplo, a lot of conferences I've been to, I've learned, I've learned. Whatever that brown liquid is that they put in those canisters and call coffee at conferences is not it. It's not it. And it leaves you like craving more coffee. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know. It's like somehow the bad coffee is like, it, I, I don't know. It's like you, you think there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. If you just keep drinking more, somehow you'll get there. No, it doesn't work out. Whereas one good cup of coffee, smooth sailing. And it's really distracting too when, when you get a bad cup of coffee and you're like trying to find a better one. Starbucks is usually pretty reliable. Uh, a Starbucks venti, venti Americano is usually pretty reliable. Although sometimes they screw that up. If you don't, if you don't get a good barista, sometimes it can be like lukewarm. It's weird. But I actually hate. No, I hate. That's a strong word. I actually end up being disappointed many times in like trendy coffee shops because I find that the coffee is, and I guess it's allegedly it's supposed to be quote unquote better this way. I find that the coffee is lukewarm and kind of, I don't know, not, not it. Overcharge and under deliver. to the airport. So allegedly there are two types of people in this world. Those who get to the airport way too, hour, too early and those who like get there just in time. But I'm actually somewhere in the middle. I like to have no more than an hour at the gate. Anything more than that seems excessive, but I don't like cutting it close solely because I find that the airport is like a very zen place, A, to work and be to people watch and I just I feel like I paid for my flight and that's part of the experience but if you get there too early and say the flight is delayed well then you're spending way too much time at the airport anyway see like we can see this nice what do you call this display <laughs> uh towards Howard Hughes there on the coin we've obviously paid for this little mini museum here so who is this how cute is this outfit? This is what the flight attendants wore. Look at their little bag. Check it out, you guys. You know, I'm a huge fan of vacuum cleaners. Check that out. Cleanliness is next to hot rodliness. All right, I'm here in the Southern Living Houston gift shop with all things like Houston, like souvenirs. I got this space rocket. It's like a little purse with an astronaut in it. I wonder what people would say if I showed up to the event tonight carrying this as my hair bag. It's so soft. That's really soft. If only this were big enough to meet my coffee needs. If you're new here, like the problem with me and mugs is majority of coffee mugs are simply inadequate. Like, what am I gonna drink out of it? Milk? No. <laughs> what is this like? 
Oh, a Build-A-Bear. Yeah, it is Build-A-Bear. But is it really Build-A-Bear if you're not, like, going through the motions of stuffing the bear and, like, picking out? I guess you can pick out the outfits. I did this once, like, decades ago. It, is, it was kind of fun. Texas size pen pencil. Pencil. That's how a lot of Southerners say pencil. Pencil. At least that's how my elementary school teachers would say it. You'll need a number two pencil. Air Force One. Now this NASA mug, it kind of looks like it's copying, um, is it Emma Bridgewater? A little bit. I feel like this is a little out of place. Like, why do we have Disney stuff in here? This isn't Orlando. It's not, I'm here at my gate, but I look at my haphazard, it's, it's seemingly a haphazard packing job, but I double stuffed my bag again. This is my work bag, like where I keep my laptop and stuff. It's really handy, um, but I stuffed it in this tote bag that I got at Target a couple of years ago, a new day. But I have my clothes in this packing cube, my makeup. This is that makeup bag that I got at Reward Style. It was a gift and I love it. It's really nice. But, um, and then my skincare toiletries. I brought the Thank You Farmer sunscreen and I also brought the Cetaphil moisturizing cream. And I have a little travel can of the Moroccan oil uh, heat protectant spray. That stuff is great. That and the styling cream, I love. All right, anyway, I'm gonna get to working on on some work here, take advantage of the Wi-Fi before we have I'm on the plane. Boarded on later than we were supposed to arrive. All right, we made it to our hotel. Staying at the Warwick Melrose. It's a Dallas landmark. We'll go slow. I just entered the room. So when I booked this room, I didn't think it was gonna be this big. I could live in here. Looks like I have a nice workspace here. A living room, well furnished with a TV and popcorn for $4, yikes. <laughs> Safe and some drawers, sweet. Remote control and a uh, plastic bag. Here's the view. Let's get some natural light up in this place. The deep in the heart of Texas. Whoa, we have a dining nook too. Dang. I had no idea I was gonna have, I, I feel like they put me in the wrong room because I feel like I did not book a suite. <laughs> suite, I got one anyways. Let's turn the light on up in here. Ooh. Oh nice, a fridge. Man, I am super happy with this situation. Keurigs going on. Speaking of Keurig, uh, y'all know how I, 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 we talked about this this morning. Keurig's okay, like it'll, it'll do, you know, it'll do, it'll do. <laughs> um, but there's this Keurig pod that I am dying to try. I think it's called Kicking Horse. It's got like a whiskey flavor to it. And I have heard rave reviews about it. I wanna say kicking horse, but maybe it's dark horse, something with a horse in it. I, I really wanna try it. Or maybe it's a buffalo. Buffalo Trace, Buffalo Trace. 
I knew it would come to me eventually. Buffalo Trace. I want to try their coffee because I've heard such good things about their their Keurig pods. They have like a whiskey flavor to them. I'm not a I don't drink, but I would like to try that because I'm I'm intrigued. You know, I'm a coffee I'm a coffee lover, so I'm gonna try that. Um, but I don't want to invest in a Keurig just to try this coffee that I may or may not like. Moving on, man. Whoa, check out the, this. This is an apartment, you guys. This is a Frank apartment. This is the bedroom. Wow. Hopefully it's not too noisy here at night. Um, this would be a great place to have a wedding. As a matter of fact, when I was coming through the hallway, I saw one of the rooms was labeled bridal suite. I guess that's where they get all partied up for the big day. I don't know why I'm talking like that. I guess it's this Texas monthly wildcatter that made me break into some sort of a bizarre Western movie accent. Here we go, shower, nice mirror. I like to show all these little details too because I know some of you guys watch you may be traveling and these things may be um, you know relevant to you like heights and things and stuff it matters doors at a at a good level all right y'all that is the room it is huge i was not expecting this when i booked I, I swear i just booked like a regular room maybe these are all the rooms are like this spacious all i know is it's close to where well i got some work done in the past 40 minutes and threw myself together. I have this cute little shirt dress that I'm wearing to the event. So yeah, I think I'm gonna head on over there. It stopped raining, it rained briefly. So I think I'll be okay to just walk over there. I see a lot of people out walking about, so I think- All right, I'm on the elevator, here we go. Party. I had a good time and I met some girls that I met at another event last year. I actually met up with them in person. We've stayed in touch pretty regularly since that event. So it was really good to see them in person and chat with them. Although the room was like really crowded. It got really crowded and had loud music playing. So it became somewhat difficult to talk. So I started losing my voice. Yeah, I'm just gonna hop in the shower and call it a night. Really quick, let me show you what I brought in my toiletry bag. Of course, a dental floss I have to have. Um, I, bought the, I brought this on my trip to the AAD, this Bloom Effect Royal Tulip Cleansing Jelly. And I actually really liked it. They sent this to me along with a sunscreen, a moisturizer, and a cream cleanser. And all, all of those things have been Pretty good, I have no complaints. This works really well. I prefer it to the Fenty Skin Jelly Cleanser, um, Jelly Oil Cleanser. It's, it's kind of a similar, if you like the Jelly Oil Cleanser, I think you would like this. It doesn't have any fragrance. It has strawberry seed oil. It has a nice little grip to it. It really does a good job. It's gentle around the eyes. Anyway, so I brought that and I brought my Cetaphil moisturizing cream, although I think I'm gonna finish that up here tonight. And I brought this for tomorrow. I thought about bringing the Kroger one, but I decided not to. And I also brought, I keep this in my travel bag. It's pretty good. It's a Neutrogena lip sleeping mask. It's nice for travel purposes. It's kind of like a thick balm contact lenses in there and my little travel Moroccan oil heat protecting spray which I didn't end up using this time I got this on Amazon I have a big one of the one I have a big one that I use all the time but I and I also have that um, styling cream that's really good here I can you guys know the styling cream uh, I'm going to hop in the shower but I'm gonna close out this vlog I will see you guys in the morning make sure you come back for tomorrow's vlog it'll go live at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time so set your alarm if you need to now
<laughs> you could sleep in, trust me, I am all for sleeping in. I recommend it. Sleep in, you know, I wish in a, in a utopia, we would just fall asleep when we wanted to and we would wake up when our body wakes up. We wouldn't like be forced to do other things. I know that there's the reality of needing to get up at certain times and to be on some sort of schedule and yada yada. But in a utopia, you would just be, I'm tired. And you would just fall down and there'd be like a nice cloud that would cushion you and you could just sleep and it'd be complete, like this cocoon would come around you and it would be like a little soothing sleep pod and you would just sleep until you woke up. I mean, it would be that simple. As a side note, I know I'm, I'm rambling now, but I came up with this idea of like a sleep boot camp. You know how they always have these boot camps for fitness and you know people on a weight loss journey? What about a sleep boot camp? It would be intense in the sense that you couldn't have any device, any iPads, no TV, no screens. Um, the goal being to retrain your brain, like to just be on a more natural sleep-wake cycle and go to sleep like when the sun goes down, start to get sleepy and wake up when the sun starts coming up and just try and go back to that natural sleep rhythm and just put somebody in a boot camp like that for 12 weeks, just like out in this peaceful area with like no sound and noise pollution. Um, and there would be like daily walks for, you know, gentle exercise because exercise helps improve sleep. There'd be good quality food um, and just like leisure time. I mean, like a vacation, but intensively focused on restoring your sleep pattern. I think that would, I think that could help some people out. I mean, obviously there are sleep disorders for which, you know, that would not correct, but a lot of people just get out of sync from our lifestyle. We get out of sync um, because we're expected to operate in a way and any deviation from that takes us several steps back you know because if you something comes up and you end up having to stay up late well you still have to wake up at the same time the next morning so therefore you're in you're in debt uh, with, with your sleep needs and I think a lot of people get in a vicious cycle where they're just completely off track a boot camp to reset your sleep telling you it's one of those things though that sounds really cool but it would end up being one of those things that annoying rich people do like oh i just came from a sleep retreat why don't you just do that well because i don't have nine grand to throw around all right y'all i'm gonna wrap this video up i hope you enjoyed it i hope you had fun coming with me if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.